Hi guys, and welcome to Studio One with me, Gregor. So today we want to take a look at Exchange, which got a complete overhaul recently, and it's a perfect platform to uh, upload and download ideas, presets, groove maps, and more, and share it with other users. Now, it's really awesome how that's integrated in Studio One, and I want to show you that right now. So you can access Exchange two different ways. You can either go to my.personas.com in your browser and from there take all the time you need to browse this awesome library of ideas with effects chains, sound set, presets, groove maps and more that other users have contributed. Myself, I have added three macros so far to Exchange and I'm planning to do a whole lot more. And I want to show you what you can do with them, but I specifically want to show you that with the other way that you can uh, access Exchange and that is directly from within Studio One. Now, I think that's what makes Exchange really powerful, that it's so tightly integrated within the software itself and that you can access all this material right from there. Let me show you. All right, so in this example here, I have a little drum groove prepared and I want to add to that with my external synthesizer to go for a nice techno-y bass line. And I already apologize to some of the people in the comments who have complained that I'm showing too much electronic music in my examples. I just feel that my colleague Joe Gilder does such a terrific job at covering the, you know, real instrument side of things. But that said, of course, all the things that I'm showing here with MIDI, with electronic instruments can be applied just as well to any music that you make. So please don't think that this is exclusive to the music that I'm showcasing here, okay? Now with that out of the way, let's get started and see what we got here. Ah yeah, sometimes there's nothing like an external analog synthesizer. All right, so I want to record this right now, but if I do that, then I run into a couple of slight issues. For starters, if you're triggering an external sequencer, like here the sequencer from the Pro 2, keep in mind that it's often advisable to have a little bit of pre-roll, such as one bar or two bars, to give the MIDI clock of the synthesizer the time it needs to catch up to Studio One's MIDI clock. Once you've given it one bar or two bars, it's gonna lock in place and play that sequence nice and tightly. I also want to record exactly within this loop range. We call this auto punch in Studio One. So as soon as this loop range beginning is reached, the recording starts and exactly when this endpoint is reached, the recording stops. The only issue with that is that I can't activate pre-roll and auto punch at the same time in Studio One. I can only do one or the other. But in this case, it would be really handy to have both. Also, when you're recording vocals or guitars, there's many scenarios that I can think of where this would be a preferable behavior. Fortunately, we can make Studio One behave this way through macros. And this is really one of the greatest strengths of this software. You can make it adapt to your workflow, not the other way around. Because macros can take a little bit of time to get into, I've prepared this macro for you and uploaded it to Exchange. Now we get to talk about the other way that you can um, access Exchange and that is directly from Studio One itself. That's really where the true potential of this awesome platform lies. So to access Exchange from Studio One, open up the browser if you don't have it open already and switch to the Clouds tab. Now you can click on Personas Exchange and now you're gonna see all the stuff that users contributed that you've already seen on mypersonas.com. So my macro for this is obviously going to be found in macros and then you just got to search for pre-roll and auto punch. Once you search for that, you're going to find it right here and all you need to do is just hit install. Now we have two options. You can either add this as a button to your macro toolbar. In order to do this, you just open up the macro toolbar and you can just create a new page like so or you take an existing page, it's your choice. And you can rename it with a right click. In my case, I'm just gonna call it Exchange. Now you wanna hit the new group button. And now I'm gonna call this Exchange Macros or something. And then add a new button with a right click underneath. Now you can assign that to Pre-Roll and Auto Punch, which is the name of the macro that we just downloaded. And as soon as we've done that, even though I have neither Auto Punch nor Pre-Roll enabled, and no matter where I am in my timeline with the cursor, I can just hit this and it's gonna work right away. Yeah, that works perfect each and every time. 
If you don't want to click a button here in your macro toolbar, that's also perfectly fine. You can just go to Studio One, Keyboard Shortcuts, and then we search for the name of the macro, which is once again pre-roll and auto punch. Assign that to any hotkey that you like. In my case, it's gonna go for one of the very few available ones on my keyboard. Hit assign, and no matter where I am with my cursor, it's gonna work right away. So, are we all good to go then? Well, not quite, because you see, let me just zoom in here really quickly into our recording. This is something that can happen sometimes when working with external synthesizers and sequencing them from MIDI coming from a computer. Especially when there's plugin latency, like in my case 5.1 milliseconds, it happens more often than not that some kind of offset is being introduced in your recording. Now, if you don't want any of this and you want it to be exactly on the grid, then the next macro is for you and it's also available from Exchange. So to download it, just go to the browser once more and just make sure that you're on Personas Exchange and search for Align Recording, which is the name that I've given to this macro. It's right here and now you just hit Install. And we're gonna add that to our macro toolbar once again. So we just right click on the already existing button, select new button and assign that to the macro name, which is once again a line recording. As soon as that's added, it takes one click on that button and your offset problem is solved immediately. Try it out if you're working with any kind of external gear, if you do electronic music, and also if you work with any kind of instrument where you wanna have pre-roll and auto punch like I've shown you previously, download these two macros, they're gonna help you out a lot.